just when I thought that Penn State was going to hit a bit of a rough spot when it came to recruiting, now they're projected to land a prospect nobody thought they were going to get. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you thought Penn State recruiting was going to go cold, well, they're ready to pull off a shocker here and land a running back that not a lot of people thought they could get. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And since this is a recruiting episode, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply and help me welcome him back. Brian Smith from the locked on podcast network also does covering recruiting for Miami of Florida does locked on Seminoles and now is based out of Alabama and covers the Auburn Tigers. And this is fitting Brian, because we're going to go right into it. Alvin Henderson, one of the a top 10 running back in the class of 2025. Penn State already has two commits, so we'll get to that in just a moment. We'll also talk about Malik Washington and Trent Wilson's impending commitment here. But this is important because Henderson was, by all accounts, recruiting experts like you and yourself, like you and everyone else far and wide, said that Henderson was most likely going to go to Auburn. He's from that area. He's connected well with the coaching staff. But don't look now out of left field, Penn State coming back from behind, and now the projections, the crystal balls, the forecasts are beginning to point and say that Alvin Henderson is going to commit to the Nittany Lions, and his commitment date, he just announced it, is April 11th, this Thursday. Brian, I, I imagine this comes as a shocker to you, because before we started this, you said, I have no idea how Penn State pulled this off. I've known Alvin for a little while, a uh, great kid, and he's from Elba, mm -hmm. Alabama, which if you find it on the map, you got to zero in on it. It's a very small town. He plays 1A football. He completely mm -hmm. obliterates everybody. He set the state record in, in Alabama last year with 61 rushing touchdowns alone, over 3,500 wow. yards. Yeah, he's solid. Um, <laughs> his brother was a big-time running back who's since switched to receiver at the University of Alabama. Athletic family. And when he walks by, you go, oh, okay, this, guy, this kid's a wrestler, a football player, track athlete. He's something. Mm -hmm. But he's a running back, and he's yoked. Uh, he's 5'10", 197 pounds, and he's probably like 6% body fat. Like, he is insanely ripped. He looks like what a running back at the Division One level should look like. But he's been to Auburn so much, it's hilarious. Like, I'm pretty sure it's three out of the last four Auburn practices I went to. I was standing next to Alvin at some point. Mm -hmm. He walks around the practice facility like he's one of the coaches. So, like, him being crystal balled anywhere other than Auburn is pretty surprising to me. Uh, Miami's made a run at him. They really, really like him. His his style fits their inside running game pretty well. He's sure. really good between the tackles. But I'd never heard Penn State as a serious contender for him. Never. And even talking to him after a recent visit to Auburn, like you mentioned, Penn State as a visit, like he just didn't expand on them at all. And he's a really interesting kid that has a lot to say. So I just figured, you know, whatever. But he took the trip to Penn State in Happy Valley this past weekend. So maybe he just wants to change pace. And I'll bring this Last piece about it up as well. I said to you on a recent show that I thought Jawan Sider was the best recruiter in the country. He is the running back coach at Penn State, so that probably helps. Yeah, the fact that Penn State, like I said, two running back commits already, and Keandre Barker and Tyke Hayes are talented prospects in their own right. Now, I'll point this out. If Alvin Henderson, if and when he does commit, because, it, like I said, all the signs are starting to point that Henderson is going to make this commitment national pundits. Uh, there's articles that localized to Auburn saying that, hey, this is this is going to happen here. Who saw this coming? Henderson instantly becomes Penn State's best running back prospect, uh, ac according to the ratings. 24-7, on three rivals, you name it. Henderson is a consensus top 10 running back in the nation, whereas Barker and, and Tyke Hayes, no disrespect to them, they are currently a little lower in the rankings. They're still nationally recognized, but they're lower four stars. I mean, Henderson in some cases, is considered a almost a top 30 player in the nation, and that's according to rivals. Yeah, John Garcia Jr., a friend of mine and yours, really likes him. I talked to John recently about him. We just like his productivity. 
how consistent he is. Again, over 3,000 yards, regardless of competition, it shows his durability. And finally, he's a guy that just has a nose for the end zone. It's 61 rushing touchdowns last year. That's nice. <laughs> touchdowns Solid. win your football games, if you can believe that. Yeah, it's amazing. But he's a kid that I think is he's been recruited for so long, some people have kind of forgotten about him. Uh, he was an early name in the recruiting process because he was a dude. But now you're looking at it and you're like, well, where'd Penn State come from? I still need to see it happen because of – my history, knowing yeah. the kid and being around yeah. him. But like Tom Woy is the one that put it in and Tom's pretty well connected. Maybe he knows something I don't, but uh, I, I don't have Penn State connections. I don't, I don't really follow the, up north as much. But mm -hmm. That's wild, man, because like kids from Alabama just don't go north. They yeah. really don't. And Penn State, when was the last kid that, that Penn State got out of Alabama? Uh, actually, Elliot Washington. Elliot Washington, I know he's from the state of Florida, but he was committed to Alabama and then Penn State flipped him. So this is a new precedent yeah. that's been set by James Franklin and this Penn State recruiting staff, coaching staff. You get what I mean? That before it was all D.C., Maryland, Virginia, New York, New Jersey, maybe an Ohio kid. And now you're just seeing Penn State land players out of the state of Florida, Texas. Keandre Barker originally from there, but transferred to a Florida high school, Miami Central, as you're very familiar with. But Penn State has increased its footprint, and you would never expect that a kid from Alabama, a kid from the sunny skies in Florida, would take a plane trip all the way up to the middle of central Pennsylvania to play football for the Pennsylvania State University. And that's, that is a testament to, in this case, J1 Sider, but also James Franklin. As many people try to dunk on yeah. him, but they have recruiting figured out in this, in this day and age with all the other extracurricular factors here. Penn State, I said it last year, I think on your show and a couple others, mm -hmm. from an organizational standpoint, it's ironic because Franklin gets picked on so much about his game day coaching, and I dunk on that. I, I will continue to until otherwise proven. But mm -hmm. recruiting-wise, they know what they want. They zero in on it. It's a team effort, and they do a great job. There is no denying they're conservatively a top five recruiting program in the country, considering where they're located. There's not near as many players in PAs are used to be like 30 years ago. And they're still having top 10 classes or on that verge. And they're getting kids out of other schools, backyards that really want those kids to stay home. So first and foremost, give them credit for even being in the race. Cause like Penn state in my lifetime, I don't know if they've signed an elite player out of Alabama. I don't even know if they've come close. Maybe there has, and I'm just forgetting somebody, but like it, it's arguably the hardest state to pull somebody out of, out of the South. So it, it's really, really unique. I'll also say this Penn state is not broke. So where they might lose out in some cases for NIL, Penn state can also return the favor. You know, they, they can, t sometimes they can't necessarily take it, but they can certainly dish it out too. Penn state again is a top 10 earning athletic school in the entire country so money is not an issue here it's just you know how are they allocating certain resources but that that's a that's a small point here i want to finish with this they they will have if and when henderson does commit again this episode is coming out before his april 11 thursday commitment date if henderson commits and it's looking that way penn state's got three running backs in the class that is very unusual in that case, it's, it's different when you have four wide receivers, five right, wide receivers, right? Because you can run, you don't typically run three, four running back sets in this case. True. I, Brian, as I, as we sit here right now, I got to think somebody's decommitting. Maybe Penn State can maintain and keep three running backs. I mean, they were recruiting the likes of Jabri Wallace Coleman, who was local, right? I thought, I, I thought Alvin Henderson, because he was from the state of Alabama, this was a waste of time. You weren't going to get his commitment. We've made that very apparent that it was always Auburn. And that's why this comes as a complete surprise. So I'm like, why are they so focused on Henderson when you have Wallace Coleman, who decommitted from Georgia? You have Bo Jackson, who's at least a little more local in the state of Ohio. And those players were showing probably similar amounts of interest. And yet they've narrowed in on Henderson here. So for, for Hayes and Barker, I don't know what that looks like. Like I said, I think they can compete in a running back room with Henderson. But that's just two, even with Singleton and Allen. Three, you have Quentin Martin coming up. You have the the likes of Cam Wallace. There's a lot of running backs that Penn State still has projected well for the future. And three running back commits just a year later? I don't remember the last time three went to a school. I mean, it happens. Mm -hmm. But it, that three that really planned to play running back. 
back in the day, Penn State might have signed three in like 1991. It's a good point. Someone could switch to wide receiver. Good point. But like, how many kids really want to do that? Like, it, it's different mm. to play running back. Although Alvin's brother did make that transition at the University of Alabama, so it's possible. Alvin's built a little differently. He's built for running yep. back. His brother's a little longer, a little more slender. Sure. I don't know, man. Uh, if it happens, maybe Penn State's figured out something else that I didn't even anticipate. So what what am I supposed to say to that? I mean, congrats to them if they get it done. I will take Henderson. And it, if they keep Henderson and somebody else, you know, Hayes is from the state of Pennsylvania. Barker's moved around Texas and now Florida. I'm not saying that, you know, let's <laughs> – I, but I do have a preference. If Henderson's ranked as a top 10 running back, I'm going to want him for Penn State in the class of 2025. So Penn State gets a, a projected recruiting win. Quarterback Matt Solers goes to Missouri. We all know that that's well and good. But does Penn State even actually need a second quarterback in the class of 2025? That's something that's been brought to our attention here. We're going to discuss that on the other side of this break. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet each and every game. Right now, new customers can get $150. That's right, $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots in hockey to home runs in baseball to slam dunks in basketball, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? You ever have to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How about the show? Like this episode, get this show, these conversations in front of more Penn State fans. I would really appreciate that. And let us know in the comments what you think about Penn State possibly landing a third running back commit if they, somebody else will decommit and the second quarterback. Malik Washington is now the prime target with Matt Zoller's going to Missouri. Beckham Kritza is currently committed in the class of 2025. Brian, this is something important to point out. You've seen Kritza play. You, you know him. He's now he's back at Miami Central. He was in Colorado, transferred to Miami Central, transferred back to Colorado. Now he's back at Miami Central. And he recently won an award at a rivals camp. So he showcased his talent, and it looks like he's getting better. This is not to come down on Kritza that Penn State needs a second quarterback commit. Again, Drew Aller and Bo Perbula are starting to go into veteran status. Aller is eventually going to go into the NFL, most likely into the 2025 draft. So a second quarterback, unlike a third running back, makes sense for them. But Kritza continues to develop. He's getting better. And from what, what I'm seeing, the reports are indicating that Penn State really likes Kritza. Kritza committed as early as he did. Mike Yersich was fired. And Kritza committed in, in that same time frame, right? In a matter in a span of 24 hours, you lose your offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, and you land a quarterback commit with the uh the future uncertain. So they like Kritza a lot, or else they wouldn't have taken that commitment. So does that mean Malik Washington is even going to be a, a primary target at this point for Penn State? Are they actually pushing for a second quarterback if it doesn't make sense? That is a great debate. Um, I like the Washington kid a lot. You know, I do I think too. His mo I think his mobility and his arm and everything. You could do a lot of different things with him with the RPO game. This isn't mm -hmm. an in-depth analysis by any point, but <laughs> kids that move around and can throw it, there's a chance for a really high ceiling. A I'm lot of them are busts, but he's a different kind of quarterback than, mm -hmm. than Kritzka. And I mean, he could move a little bit, but he's not a true run pass guy. Yeah. I think that, it would be a wise decision. You can't miss a quarterback, man. And they're going to lose their starter after this year and next. So mm -hmm. you need to have as many bullets in the gun as you can have. You also have the injury to Jackson Smolik. Eventually he will recover, but the quarterback room currently as it stands is Drew Aller, Bo Perbula, and Ethan Grunkmeyer as far as scholarship quarterbacks go. They do have they do have a fourth QB that again probably could play at a lot of other a lot of small a lot of other smaller schools, but 
everyone understands what I'm highly recruited, touted quarterbacks. Those are your three with the injury to Smolik. So yes, a second quarterback does make sense from Malik Washington's talent, as you mentioned. And here's the other thing too. This is purely speculation because Washington has visited Penn State almost a dozen times on his own wow. accord. And I find that interesting that Washington is taking so much of his free time to go to Penn State but has not scheduled an official visit. Is Penn State telling him? Is Penn State, because here, here are the reports, Brian. The reports say that Penn State's still going to recruit Matt Zollers, even until all the way until signing day. So just because he's at Missouri doesn't mean that Penn State's going to say, you know, oh, well, you know, we're good, we're content, that's that. No, Penn State is going to recruit Zollers all the way through. And like you said before, with Andy Kotelnicki now at the helm calling the, calling the shots in the offense, Penn State might need to showcase, hey, this is what it's going to look like from the passing standpoint. I know what you saw before in 2022, 2023, but here's the future, and this could be you. And remember, we're we're close to home. Missouri's very far away, regardless of right. all, all the other things, right? So if Penn State is going to continue to put its focus towards Matt Solers, maybe they don't even want Malik Washington a as much. Again, the, the official visit thing is very intriguing. I'm surprised that he hasn't even taken one. And at this point, still not scheduled. I don't know what to make of that other than maybe, you know, he's got a conflict. That happens That's where true. one school really wants a kid to visit on a date and the other school wants the same thing. Can't be two places at once. Yes. That's the common theme. But I don't know Malik, so maybe he's not sure what Penn State's situation is for him because he doesn't want to be in a class with two quarterbacks. There's a lot of plausible mm -hmm. scenarios. I guess the question is, who do you think, if it's not Penn State, where does Malik go? If Penn State wasn't an option, where do you think he would go? I would Virginia look at Tech. That. What's that? Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. They need help. So um, I'd imagine he has a better path to playing time there. Yep. But at the same time, I don't know. They haven't been great lately. It's kind of hard to pick Virginia Tech. They're, they're a fluttering program until otherwise proven. So he's got some really unique choices to make here. I mean, he is taking – so the both of their spring games are on Saturday, April 13th here. And he's going to see Virginia Tech and not Penn State's. I would say he's leaning towards the Hokies. That's – follow the visits. That never changes. So – I. Malik Washington likes Penn State, but does Penn State, that's what I'm getting at now. Does Penn State like Malik Washington enough? Because again, all of their attention is not all, you know, a primary bulk of their attention has been on Matt Zollers through all of this. And the reports say that they're going to continue to recruit Zollers. So that's probably not a good feeling if you're Malik Washington, that, hey, I'm, I'm not yeah. exactly top on their board and they're continuing to chase other recruits that are committed somewhere else. That's always a factor. Everybody's got an ego. You you want to go where you're wanted. So yeah. if that's True. truly the case, Malik probably has a little chip on his shoulder towards Penn State. And I don't think there's anything to do about that. Um, maybe it's just best there's a parting of the ways, perhaps. I don't know. But uh, that's going to be tough to overcome. And there's also scholarship counts to keep in mind, right? You know, where's Penn State? Again, they're going after a third running back. They... At the end of the day, I, I could be wrong with all of this. All these conversations could be a waste of time. And that Penn State's plan was to take a, a one and only quarterback. May a second QB would be nice. Again, Zoller's being a top five quarterback it is an obvious want in your class of 20, any class. It doesn't matter if it's 2025. 20, if you have a top five quarterback in the nation that is going to commit to you, regardless if you have one QB already committed, if you plan to take two, you don't just pass on Zollers because, well, we we have Kritza. We have somebody else. We we don't need – no, you take the top five quarterback. But I think I, I'm starting to get the sense that Penn State might be very content with one, and Beckham Kritza is going to protect better. Like an Ethan Grunkmeyer, right? Ethan Grunkmeyer on rank, then became a lowly three-star, then finished as a top 10 quarterback in his respective rankings. I could see the similar climb with Kritza's development as well. Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot to that. I mean – Pritzka is a really hard kid. Just use him as an example to mm -hmm. kind of figure out because he's really thin. He's about six six, six seven. Huge kid in terms of his frame, but he's a toothpick. How do you pick how good he's going to be if you're the Penn State staff? You take that chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there, there's some risk here. And again, 
when you miss a quarterback, it goes bad. So they, I, I'm not saying they've cornered the market on everything because nobody's figured out quarterback. Even the NFL level, they miss more than they, they get right yeah. by a long shot. It's not even competitive. <laughs> so there's a lot of moving parts here. I'm going to throw in one extra just for fun. There's a long way between now and December signing date. There could be somebody else that ends up in that mix because Penn State's not going to just sit idly by. They're still evaluating kids, so don't be surprised if there's another guy that emerges after June if Washington does not come on board. And we saw that just last year, right? Testament right there is Ethan Grunkmeyer and, and all the other. You know, there were other, you know, just to name some, you know, a couple others like like Tyler Cherry, for example, and, and ends up. Forget where he went. Oh, and just Tyler Cherry, for example, ends up committing to Indiana. Was committed to Duke. Ended up uh, ultimately settling with Indiana. And so quarterback development is not over in April. It's going May, June, July. So this conversation is definitely going to continue, and it's a lot of fun since we get to talk about it, Brian. Now Penn State is doing well in that regard, but still no defensive line commitments. And the way it's looking for Wednesday, April tenth. They're going to miss out on another one. We'll discuss Trent Wilson's decision on the other side of the spring. And since this is a recruiting episode, let's talk about the leaders in job recruiting, LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality candidates that are right for the role. That's why I have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and might not have the time to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even quicker. 2.5 million. That's right. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Come one of them. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Trent Wilson getting ready to decide between Oklahoma, Ohio State, Penn State, and Maryland. It's looking like it's going to be the Sooners. Before we get to that, remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. You can check out Brian's work. Follow him on X covering Miami Hurricanes, Auburn Tigers, Florida State Seminoles with the Locked On Seminoles podcast if you want to keep up with Brian's work on the national level and also narrowed down to some other SEC and Southern area schools. Trent Wilson, is his commitment is set for Wednesday, April 10th. So this is within a 24-hour window. And save for the final segment here because I've already shared my thoughts on it. it. It wasn't looking good when he announced his commitment date before his visit was set. He was going to go to the Penn State spring game, Bloom White game on April 13th, Saturday, but then strategically announces that, oh, I'm going to commit on Wednesday, April 10th. That's not a good sign. All indications point to the Oklahoma Sooners. He did take that official visit to Ohio State as well, but it seems like he has settled on the Sooners. And Brian, what's interesting is that he only took one visit to Oklahoma and just in a matter of a couple of days made his decision. So that this, yeah, uh, it's, it's, and, and Penn State, he visited Penn State a good amount of times, right? It seemed like Penn State, I know locality, you know, proximity to where you are plays a big factor into how many play Malik Washington, right in the Maryland area. It makes sense that he's going to go see Penn state quite a bit, you know, over 10 times, right? Trent Wilson, same case, Maryland area, St. Francis high school, one of the best high schools in all of the country when it comes to football currently at Henry wise. And he's a highly touted defensive lineman four star, but one of the best prospects, a consensus top three in the state of Maryland, consensus top 15 defensive lineman in the nation and a top 150 player in the entire country. So this is a big loss. And I have to say it again, Dion Barnes and this staff are, are not recruiting defensive linemen. Well, I know they took a lot of commitments in the previous class, but zero to this point, none. You're going to have guys like deny Dennis Sutton, move on Devon Ellis, Hakeem Beeman. All those guys are veterans and going to go into the NFL. Abdul Carter 
right? So your starting four defensive linemen are all going into the 2025 NFL draft. What gives? I don't know exactly why you would, I would, you would think there's a Jersey, New York PA kid they could get, but like Todd Bates is the D line coach at Oklahoma and he's an elite recruiter and he was at Clemson all those yeah. years under Venables. That's the key. He's one of the best recruiters in the country. He's up there with cider. That's the catch. Um, and he's put a lot of guys in the NFL. So that's hard to beat, but it's still all the way across the country. I'm guessing NIL is a part of this. Oklahoma is a big NIL school, but it's still relationships first. You're not going to go all the way to Oklahoma unless you have a great relationship. And that's just something that, you know what? You got to give Bates credit. He, he gets one of these kind of recruitments every year that he goes in and steals somebody out of their backyard. This year, he's taking a kid out of Maryland, which is really random for the University of Oklahoma Sooners. So, uh, Penn State needs to get defensive line recruits in every class, just like everybody else. Being at zero right now will give me some pause as well, Zach. That's that's a bit bizarre for the Nittany Lions. There is some hope, and Brian, you're probably familiar with this name because it is a Miami, Miami Central player, a Florida area defensive tackle prospect, and that's Randy Adarica. Six foot five, 250 pounds, will we'll ultimately project as a defensive tackle. But Penn State has not one, but two visits set up with the Florida native. So there, there is some good news here. They're not just, oh, well, we didn't get any defensive linemen, so we're done. No, they're just going to shift their focus away. What what can you tell us about Adarica that intrigues you with Penn State's recruitment here? For one, he's a lot bigger than 250 now. Uh, he's probably 270, okay. 275. Wow. He's a pure three tech, uh, great kid. A lot of power, uh, still needs to work on the technique quite a bit, but Florida State and Miami are the teams that have been after him. His teammate, Bacard, is another kid Penn State probably would take, another defensive tackle. Um, look, you just go to Miami Central, you'll find somebody. Uh, that's the first thing. Yeah. They've got a lot of guys. That's where Beckham Kritzka's at. Mm -hmm. I think that he's the guy that could be your anchor as a three-tech and, and to command double teams because he's a powerful kid. Okay. Randy's not a finished product but the frame and the mentality are what you're looking for. I can assure you that. So that's where Penn State currently stands with defensive line. Again, they're, they're not finished, and they have dozens upon dozens of visits set up for the spring game. Summer visits, right? We're getting into recruiting season here, getting into the summer with official visits, and that's when Brian and I are going to have some of our best conversations. In addition to you know what we've done here previously is Penn State expected to get Alvin Henderson. Do they need Malik Washington or even a second QB? And there's still light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to defensive line. Brian, I always appreciate the time as always and can't wait for our next conversation as more kit commits are going to be on the way as official visit season is almost upon us. Thanks again. Thank you very much, sir. I look forward to it. Thanks again for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. If you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to the YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcast. Like this episode, help these conversations get in front of more Penn State fans really appreciate the support with the show, with the channel. And don't forget, the Locked On Podcast Network has made history launching the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Find Locked On Sports today on YouTube, and now it's available on the free Fire TV channels app.